Mark Daniel Nelson here with Make My Music. It's been a while since I've been on the channel, and I thought I'd come in and do a nice little end of the year video about the top five things that they don't say when you come into the industry. Warren and I were having a chat about life, about the year, about what's cooking, and we were talking about certain elements about young guys coming into the industry and not really knowing the code or certain things that when you were coming in back in the 90s or early 2000s, learning in a studio environment, you'd be mentored under somebody that knew a lot and trained you to understand the code of some sort. And it made me start thinking about certain things. And I was flipping through Warren's book and noting a handful of the things that I wanted to bring to the attention to today. It could be as a mixer, as a songwriter, as a producer, tracking engineer, as a studio owner, these are my favorite five. Number one, politics and psychology of a tracking session and a writing session. The biggest thing when you are bringing in people, when you're working with an artist, when you've never worked with them before, is to understand how to work together the best efficient way you can. This could mean that you've done your research, you've done pre-production on the demo track, you've learned the song as a tracking engineer enough to know where you're going to go with that. The most important thing that I think when you're working with somebody new is to understand the politics behind things when it comes to do's and don'ts, etiquette in the studio, and the psychology of working together. Getting a song together in pre-production, planning things in advance, really helps you and pushes you forward to get yourself in a headspace that you can deal with certain elements of the political side of bandmates or the psychological side of you running a session. This could be as a writer, this could be as the producer, tracking engineer, even down to mixing. You wanna get yourself and your ducks in a row as quickly as possible to understand that you are the conduit to keep it all together and that the talent behind tracking is just there as frosting on the cake. In my honest opinion, it's equally as important as the sounds you're getting as it is of you running the session and having things down, focused, tight, and ready to go. Number two, always be recording. This is something that I learned very early on in my career that at the time, I was a tape operator and early Pro Tools. You didn't have a ton of space to just let things record. But I was always taught you make sure you're rolling when you can. And I'm not talking about loop recording. I'm talking about recording early, the rehearsal and everything, as much as you can, because there are always magic elements that you miss if you weren't taking that take. I remember about seven years ago, I was doing a session with Robert Duvall, and he wasn't incredibly comfortable singing this song that we were working on in this film. And I didn't roll the rehearsals. And he was going through it and getting everything good, and he nailed it. I mean, he just nailed it in one of the takes on rehearsal, even though we weren't taking the take. We were setting stuff up still. What happened was when we started recording the takes, he just wasn't getting it the way he had it before. And sadly, we never got the take that he had on his rehearsal. So my rule of thumb is always be recording because you never know what take you're gonna get even if it's not connected to a click or if it's just the rehearsal. Magic is there, capture it. Number three, less microphones is more. I come from the rule of thumb that if you're capturing a drum set and you start putting 30 microphones on a drum set, just because you had the tracks or you can, you're starting to introduce phase that can cause all sorts of problems. By cutting things down, even down to a mono overhead, it can really start making things sound twice as big. I'm not a big fan of putting more than two mics on a piano unless it's in a very large room. I know there's a lot of people that like to put two or three sets on something and sometimes they blend that together. I feel that impact wise and size wise, less always seems to be more. Try it sometime. Number four. The committing concept. Something that Warren and I talk about, and it's definitely in the book, is about as a producer or a writer, or even a mixer, we get in these devil's triangle, as I like to call it, with not wanting to commit and leaving options for the long run. I feel that 
as artists or creatives, we are constantly growing our talents to try things out and experiment. But what it does is it limits us to really express ourselves as a mixer or a writer or a producer by not committing. Committing a delay to a guitar, committing compression on the front end. It's actually a little more fun when you do that and it gives yourself a little more space and a little more confidence when you're going into certain things by committing. Over time, you gain a lot more confidence when you're able to commit certain elements. But I am a huge fan of committing and letting the air breathe instead of sitting on stuff, tinkering with certain things over and over until it just becomes numb. That's why we call it the devil's triangle because you get locked into this. It happens on ref mixing, demoitis on mixing, tracking if you're not committing certain elements up front. Most of the time you're just stepping into a shit sandwich. So I would say, try committing more. Try to get things out of the way and it'll give you a little more time to do the things you want to do and focus on. Number five with the bullet is gear is not everything. The biggest key that we always forget as engineers is we love gear and we love toys and we love compressors and EQs and converters and I love all of that stuff. But what it comes down to is the music. We've got to find ways to be inspired while still having the toys we have. I was just cracking open a bunch of cassettes that was recorded back in the 90s and I had my 424 Tascam cassette recorder opened up and I didn't have anything other than a microphone and the Porta Studio. I had one reverb box and the EQ on board and I was just making songs. And listening back to that, it's critical. I mean, we think of things differently when we are limiting ourselves to that. I know people talk about this a lot, but I do feel like the in the box game is not relevant as much as it used to be. I feel like mixing in headphones is absolutely acceptable and works incredibly well. Just things have changed a lot in the last 20 years. I love sitting around gear, but the thing that I'm gonna start thinking about for me is to start limiting a little bit of these elements and focusing more on the emotion of a mix as a mixer or the idea that I can make really good music, but it's always gonna be about the song and the arrangement of the song. And focusing on that tends to help. That about wraps it up for me. That's my top five things. If you guys want any more information, please go and buy the book, Home Recording. It's on sale now for the holiday season and it has loads and loads of stories, tricks, and antidotes to get you the best results you can get. Mark Daniel Nelson, and happy mixing. <laughs>